Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today, highly requested, I wanted to go ahead and cover the early game atlas I'm going to be doing in Path of Exile 3.25, Settlers of Kalgar. Now I do need to emphasize the early game of my atlas because I will typically use a specific atlas for climbing the atlas and generating raw currency. And then after a couple days or maybe day two, day three, I'll kind of just pivot into whatever league mechanic, you know, seems fun at the time. Righteous Fire is good at a number of League Mechanics. It's pretty much good at everything other than... In fact, let's go ahead and check the website because we can look right here. Type in League Mechanic. What is RF good for? Basically, here's what it's not good for. Sanctum. You don't want to do that. And that's not inside maps really anyway. Legion is actually okay after you get some decent explode. But for the most part, RF's not that good of a Legion build unless you're spe like specified for it. And Blight is actually insane specifically with Chieftain, but the other variants are not as good. So, <clears throat> with that being said, you can pretty much farm almost anything that you want. Uh, one other one I'd add on there is don't try to rush T16 Essences right away with RF, because you don't have the best single target, although it's doable. Anyway, let's jump into what I'm doing and how I'm starting. You'll notice right away I take these Betrayal nodes. Ever since they reworked how Betrayal is on the Atlas tree and basically made it so... You get crazy high values of league mechanics. This is kind of awesome. What I really like about this is when you are early mapping and you have a literal 40% chance to proc Betrayal slash Syndicate in your map, not only do they give an abundance of XP, they also help work towards your safe houses, which also give XP. And genuinely, even if you don't know what you're doing with them, you are still getting above average loot and you are getting very good experience. For example, just interrogating like the three people that pop up, is comparable to like almost the XP of the whole map sometimes, if not more as you get later in. So a very big fan of Betrayal. I don't try to make too much money with it. It's just like a an early game powerhouse sort of. Anyway, from here, I'm going to go ahead and move up. And I'm either going to grab the shaping nodes right away, or I'm going to go into Kirak and grab Kirak into the shaping nodes. Now, primary reason for shaping nodes in Kirak. These are shaping nodes. They basically give you a chance for your lower tier maps to become higher tier maps. Very important when you don't have your Void Stones, because Void Stones have this effect as well, while also modifying T17s. It's important though with Kirak, uh, if you don't like trading, even though we play Trade League, a lot of us don't enjoy stopping, buying one specific map, stopping, buying one specific map. And there are like third party programs for this, but I'll teach you the cheat code. It's called Kirak. All you have to do with Kirak is take enough Kirak, um, basically spawn chance, so you can do the following. Say you're running yellow maps, right? And you, yellow goes all the way from tier 6 to tier 10. And you're like, ah, oh, you know, I only have a tier 6 map and I went all the way up to tier 10. Because you've completed a tier 10, if you have a yellow Kirak mission, you can actually come over to Kirak right over here, right? And you can click this one and there's a good chance it's going to show tier 10 maps, for example, right? So that way you can kind of maybe go, okay, I don't have to climb all the way back from tier 6. I can go ahead and start back at tier 10 and then hope you get a map drop, for example, right? So this is a really nice thing about Kirak, not to mention, whenever you do this, it will also completely refresh Kirak's shop, that's and the nice. reason that's important is he will sell an abundance of all the lower maps and the map tiers you're at, and even some higher. So this way you don't have to worry about going through trade, you can literally just exchange your chance orbs, for example, chance orbs, alchemies, later on it's like chaos, but the early ones are pretty much just chance, so... This is where I use the same Atlas strat for SSF and for Trade League just for getting the Atlas completion. Now, remember I spoke about raw currency at the beginning? Raw currency for me is something that picks up later with Expedition. Now, Expedition is essentially a League mechanic where you'll notice I am specking into... Actually, it's in the next tree, so I won't jump to there yet. We'll talk about the next part, which is the Sulfite nodes. Now, these are completely optional. Um, I'm well aware that this got nerfed and it's not permanent anymore. Now it's only a minute. However, the buffs you get from this, specifically for RF, are very nice. 45% movement speed and like 105% increased damage is like pretty big. Um, for builds that already have really good damage, they probably cannot notice it as much. Even the max res can help when you're not fully geared achieving that 90 max res. It can make a massive... It could basically be the difference between you having to throw fire traps at the pack's early game and literally just shield charging with RF. So this to me has so much value and later on we can actually make money with it and I'll show you in the next drop down. So one other thing to say is uh, you'll notice over here you can see me coming over and grabbing 
another betrayal node. And the primary reason for this is when I am randomly picking execute, they're getting more than one rank, so they're getting two ranks, which TLDR just means more safe houses, which is the next part. In the early stages, when you are just randomly kind of just completing whatever map for the sake of completing it, every time you do that with intelligence gathering, you will build up intelligence for your safe houses. I don't know if I have them in here specifically right now. Do I have... Uh... Oh, yeah, here we go. Hello. You'll build up this right here. And essentially, when you run these, you just get an insane amount of XP, and then you'll push Katarina. But we're not making a betrayal guide specifically. This is just a low effort explanation, kind of. All right, so moving on into the next part, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next part here, and you'll notice the main thing here is the removal of some Kirak nodes. I actually should probably drop Kirak at this point. The removal of some map sustain, because this is assuming I have probably my two void stones here. And you'll see I filled out Expedition, and I also started filling out Shrines. Now, the reasoning for Shrines is quite literally, I just enjoy them. That's what it comes down to. At the end of the day, you still have to enjoy your mapping experience. I love strong boxes. I love shrines and even expedition is pretty fun speaking of expedition i'm going to go ahead and show you how you do expedition so step one you're going to want to make sure oh actually bob's actually do damage i kind of i kind of made this character a lot weaker just to make sure it's like a, a more accurate example here so this node here in expedition extreme archaeology all that really means is when you place this bomb right this bomb will just essentially be one bomb and hit this whole area and as long as it doesn't say immune to fire on here, for the most part, you are good. There are some other things you want to pay attention to, such as uh, mobs cannot be ignited. That'll kind of prevent your chaining. And there is a very high chance you die during this because of modifiers like mobs gain, physical damage, extra chaos, guaranteed crit, crit against enemies on full life, penetration. It's very rippy. But with Chieftain, your goal is to pretty much just explode proc. So there's a good chance I die here. There's shock ground as well for like 37% increase, but I'm gonna show you what we do. We hit detonate, we open up a portal, right? And this is probably towards the end of your map, right? Um, so if you have shrine buffs, you don't have to go ahead and leave. So this is kind of debatable on what you find, but usually at this point I'm clearing out my inventory. And then when my inventory is done, I go back into the map. And now your goal is to just trigger the chieftain explode. The only other thing you need here is ignite spread either on your gloves, you can get a cluster jewel, or you can get a barracks respite, for example. You want phasing for this because there's a lot of monsters, you want to phase through them, and you're basically just going to be throwing fire traps, shield charging, and frost blinking. I think we actually didn't even get an explode proc there, and it's still okay. Not amazing, obviously, but okay. And that is pretty much the expedition. You kind of just keep on doing that over and over and over, and you are bound to make currency. Um, expedition has a number of ways you can make currency. For example, these exotic coins right here. If I were to just go back and show you, this is a guy called Tuyan who takes the exotic coins. So you could be like, oh, well, look, there's 2C. And you kind of just can keep doing that. Occasionally, when you drop a logbook, you can either run it. I personally just sell it. And that's pretty much how I get the guaranteed currency at the beginning. The stuff that Tuyan gives you is so good for climbing your Atlas because you need those chance orbs, you need the chaos. Chaos has more value in early stages of the game because divine orbs are cheaper. So the chaos you're getting from Tuyan has more value. And then later on, it sort of equalizes. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I'll give you guys some updates with new Atlases that I am running a little bit later. As for when you decide to drop Betrayal, it's kind of really on you. I think that uh, what happened last league is people got a bunch of uh, veiled orbs early on and they weren't worth a lot. They were worth like 30C and then people got fed up with it. They're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then they shot up to like seven divines. So I personally also want to go with the lotto gamble of getting veiled orbs and then saving them and then selling them later into the league, maybe like a week or two. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I'll have the PoE planners linked in the description down below. I'll also have a link to this video on my website. So don't forget, the website is the central focus point for pretty much everything for me PoE related. So you'll find like the Chieftain Guide here and you'll find an Atlas right here. I'll just update this. Anyway, catch you guys all later. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all tomorrow.